this video, we will look at the difference between the tracking radars at the front of the Gepard and the retractable radar at the back, which provides 360 degree tracking. This is the twin Orlikon gun that fires 1,100 rounds a minute. The computer calculates the estimated lead angles and distance with the data from the tracking radar systems. We will also look at how this tank tracks and destroy the target in a small, simple, basic step-by-step -step format to help you understand better. The engineering behind the new FAPDS rounds and how it works. And most importantly, unbiased pros and cons of this anti-aircraft gun. So, don't miss a beat and stay tuned till the end. But before we move ahead, let's look at its counterparts from different countries. This is the British Marksman anti-aircraft system developed and it is similar to the German Gepard in terms of engine performance and munition carried an effective range of firing. This is the Russian Tungvesca. It is designed to provide day and night protection for infantry and tank regiments against low-flying aircraft, helicopters, and cruise missiles in all weather conditions. Moving ahead, this is the Soviet Union, ZPU, Shilka series armed with 14.5 mm heavy machine guns carry on a towed mount. This is the American M163 Vulcan Air Defense System. It uses a small range-only radar, the NVPS-2, and an N61 optical lead calculating site. The Russian Shilka cost $357,000. The Gepard tank cost around $700,000. Interestingly, the Russian Tunveska cost around $16 million. This may be due to tech upgrades over time. While Vulcan Air Defense System cost around $300,000 in the year 1975. Let's move back to the Gepard. The German engineers literally took the chassis of this Leopard tank, replaced the turret, and attached a two electric power operated turrets armed with twin Orlikon KDA 35mm guns. It has a length of 7.68 meters, keeping in mind this is stretched Leopard tank. The width extends to 3.71 meters, which is somewhat similar to Leopard 1. It has a height of 3.29 meters considering when the radar is retracted. Let us compare this to a person to understand its size. This tank is operated by a crew of three people, a commander, a driver, and a loader. Before we move into how it works, we have to understand its basic parts. This strange looking object is the velocity sensor a device to measure the exit speed of the projectiles or bullets. These are meant to feed continuous information to the fire control computer. Moving ahead, this is the Siemens tracking radar located between the guns. This is the periscope that could rotate over 360 degree. Just like the guns, they can simultaneously rotate with the forward radar. This is the hatch shared by the commander and the gunner. Moving to the back is the second radar, which is retractable. The radars provide 360 degrees scanning with simultaneous target tracking, clutter suppression, search on the move capability, and monopulse tracking mode. Inside this cover is the engine. The engine deck was also extended to house an additional 624 volt batteries. Under the engine deck is the same 830 horsepower diesel engine used in the Leopard one. This propelled the vehicle to 40 miles per hour. These are the exhaust pipe of the auxiliary engine, which runs along both the section of the hull. Let us look how this works. Step number one. This is the MPDR-12 Doppler surveillance or search radar, which is mounted on the back. This revolves 60 times per minute and has a range of 15 kilometers, roughly nine and a half miles. This radar searches for targets in the assigned airspace. When an aircraft is pinged and identified as hostile, this will be sent to the tracking radar in the front. Step number two. The Doppler tracking radar mounted on the nose of the turret takes over. This radar could rotate 180 degrees left and right and also have a range of 15 kilometers. Once it is locked on, it automatically tracks the target in the direction of the object from the observer 
elevation, and range. Step number three. The two guns are also connected to an analog automatic firing control system. The computer calculates the estimated lead angles and distance with the data from the tracking radar systems. Step number four. Once the target is identified through an IFF identification, friend or foe system is hostile and guns open fire. Let's simplify it even better. The radar in the back searches for the enemy and sends the data to the tracking radar in the front. The guns fire and eliminate the target based on the two radars. The rate of fire provided by the two barrels is 1,100 rounds a minute. Each 35 mm gun has 320 rounds of ready to fire, anti-air ammunition, and 20 rounds of anti-ground target ammunition. These cannons have an effective range of five to six kilometers. This is the size of the round in comparison to a person. The guns are capable of firing a range of standardized 35 mm ammunition, including the new FAPS rounds or in future the AHEAD ammunitions. Let's look at how this AHEAD shell works, which is designed by Rheinmetall or in full form. It's called Advanced Hit Efficiency and Destruction Round. It uses magnetic coil induction to program each round with a time to engage based on the measured muzzle velocity and the calculated future target distance after counting down the program time to fly. Not even the smallest targets can pass through this cloud of sub-projectiles without being hit multiple times. A small charge ejects the payload of tungsten sub-projectiles using their kinetic energy. The tungsten sub-projectiles densely populate the area around the point of impact, thus creating a deadly cloud of particles. Not even the smallest targets can pass through this cloud of sub-projectiles without being hit multiple times. Again, it would not be honest. If the pros and cons are not discussed, the Gepard can be used for both air defense and ground support, making it a versatile weapon system. The tank has a high degree of mobility due to its tracked chassis, allowing it to traverse difficult terrain and keep up with other armored vehicles. It is also equipped with two 35mm automatic guns that are capable of firing up to 550 rounds per minute, giving a high rate of fire and a significant amount of firepower against air targets. The Gepard has an effective range of up to 4,000 meters, allowing it to engage air targets from a safe distance. Let's look at the cons of this tank. Despite its armor, the Gepard is vulnerable to anti-tank weapons and can be disabled or destroyed by them. The Gepard's advanced electronics and mechanical systems require regular maintenance and skilled technicians to keep them functioning properly. The tank's ammunition supply is limited, which can make it vulnerable in extended engagements. We make every video from scratch in Blender 3D animation, so please do us a solid and subscribe to help us produce more video like these.